Hi everyone and welcome to my June monthly wrap up. So this is the first uh, full month's wrap up where I won't be going over you know, in detail every book that I read. If you don't know, this is the first like wrap up of mine you're watching. I used to do monthly and then bi-monthly wrap ups because I read a shit ton of books as you're about to see. <laughs> And so I recently changed this up a little bit and switched to doing weekly wrap ups because I still have usually 10 to 15 books or more to talk about. And I wanted to be able to talk in depth about those books and 15 books talking two or three minutes or more about a book quickly becomes a 45 minute video. And my monthly wrap ups were just sometimes over an hour long. And I mean, I know people like that content, but I prefer to like break it up. So the way that this one is going to go is this is going to be my wrap up and stats and then it's going to have my like top five reads of the month and then well in this case I have three of my least favorite books so that I can go into detail kind of on those. But if you want to know at the end of this video I'll have my uh, weekly vlogs. Um, that's what the name of the playlist is but the last four will have my weekly wrap ups where I talk in depth about all the books that I was reading. If you want to know more about a specific one or something like that, you can do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over my stats for this month. So I actually read 55 books this month, which is awesome. I feel much better about that. I mean, I always feel good about how many I read, but this year it's kind of been a little bananas. Like last month I read 70 books. The month before that I read 58. Like there's just been a lot. 55 felt like a good number for me. Like I didn't feel overwhelmed by everything. I think part of that has to do with the fact that I really took on a lot more audiobooks um, because I got an Audible Escape membership. And so that has just like helped me slow down just a little bit. Um, I also don't skim as much when I'm listening to a book as I do when I read because if a book isn't five stars for me I probably have skimmed in certain places that's just the honest truth for me um, but anyway so I read 55 books which turned out to be 18,807 pages and of course I'm including the audible pages because generally every book I have on audible I also have it either on kindle or paperback because I do like to read along while I listen. Um, and also, I think you can count whatever pages you want. I won't hear any trash about people saying that ebooks and audiobooks don't count as pages. No, take that toxic garbage somewhere else. Thank you. Um, which works out to be 627 pages per day, which is wowza. That's a lot, that's crazy. So for star wise, let's do this, I had Three, I had four three-star books, four 3.5-star books, 15 four-star books, six 4.5-star books, and 26 five-star books. So you can really see like my rating disparity there because I say this like a romance for me doesn't have to do a lot to get a five-star. Like if the chemistry is good, the sex is good, the characters are fun, it does what it's supposed to do, it's five-star for me. But then I usually either bump down to five if it's missing something. So there's very few books that like have half stars for me. I'm more just like, are you four or five? And if I really can't decide, I do a half star. But that's that. And then this, this month, since these wrap ups aren't going to have as many books in them as normal, I wanted to talk about what my genre breakdown was. I don't usually do that at all. So let us do that. So I read books in six different genres this month. I had 19 contemporary romance, 20 historical romance, which I know most of this comes from a certain book series that I read, which is Jennifer Ashley. I read eight books in one series and they were all historical romance. But otherwise, this is the most historical romance I've read in a month probably since I was in high school, like I wasn't keeping track back then. And I love that. I love that I read so much historical romance because I'm really getting through my shelves. Actually not because I've been buying more historical romance, but it's all good, it's all good. So then I read seven erotic romance. I read one YA dystopian, two fantasy novels. Uh, one of them was YA fantasy and one of them was adult fantasy, but I just put them together. And then one that is considered historical fiction, 
which you'll see what I mean in a second, but I always go back and forth. I consider that historical. I consider it romance. It just depends. But I put it in historical fiction because that's where most people want it to sit. So yeah, so that's the 55 books that I read. Um, let's talk about first the three books that I didn't care for that much, which one of these I did a full video on. One of these was one of our buddy reads and one of them was a buddy read I did with some other friends. So the first one that I wasn't a fan of, this will be no surprise if you watch my videos, that was A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes came out. This is the prequel to the Hunger Games series and I just was not a fan. I have an entire video ranting about this as well. It was kind of like a reading blog and rant and I just didn't care for it. I think most people feel that way. I've heard people either be like neutral or dislike it. Like I have not seen much praise. And granted, if it's a book this size, like you know this book is making uber amounts of money and I just find that kind of tragic for me that when it's a book this size by an author we love so much that it doesn't have to like please people because they'll have purchased it already you know what I mean I don't know it makes me sad and I'm sure it does mean something to someone it is still well written I just it didn't give me anything that I couldn't have lived without and in fact a few things it kind of annoyed me so there's that and it was big it was a big book then there was Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. Didn't really care for this too much. This was our buddy read. I didn't see anyone give this above a 3.5 stars in our buddy read group. I'm trying to recall. There were some people who DNF'd it. There were some people who were just impassive. Um, this was really more of a women's fiction than a historical romance, which is okay. I hope it is a gateway to historical romance for people because I hope you read this and you like the parts of it that are historical romance and the parts of it that aren't. I mean, we can do better. Like, I can find you better if you want more. So let me know. I like that it is leading some people who wouldn't try historical romance. We had a big discussion about this on our live show where we did defend the romance. You can find this on my channel. It was a live show I did last week about like what animated covers mean for the romance genre and like what they're helping and what they're hurting. So I highly suggest you check out that live show if you wanna know more about it. Um, my opinion is that I think it's false advertising for some people, but that it may get some people with that false advertising and then they'll like it. So is that good, is that bad? I don't know, but I would rather not disappoint people and then they never try historical romance again than to just be honest about it that way so and then the last one that i was pretty disappointed in was insidious by althea romig um i'm sorry about that this is one of my friends favorite books this was not the erotic romance that this would show you that it is even though i believe this is categorized as like an erotic thriller i don't know but it just was not what i was expecting this is not a romance technically um, I won't tell you why, but if you either watch my rant about this, you watch the live show, which is on my friend Steph's channel, or if you look up my review on Goodreads, I'll tell you why this isn't technically a romance. And if I had known that going in, not the spoiler of what happens, but if I had known that this wasn't a romance going in, I think that I would have been looking at it differently as it comes pun intended, looking at this cover, you're expecting a certain thing to happen and it didn't. So I felt pretty unsatisfied, but I think if you like thrillers or mysteries, but you like them a bit sexy, that this could be good for you. Uh, but it did not do it for me. Okay, now let's talk about what I was loving this month. So first off, if you've watched any of my wrap up videos, you'll know that I went on a historical binge, as I've said earlier too, where I read, I have read books one through eight, including three novellas in Jennifer Ashley's Highlander. It used to be called like the Dark Highlander series or Highlander's Desires or whatever, but it's called the Mackenzie McBride series now, which all of those books are on Audible Escape. So you should check them out. So I'm not going to talk about that in the ones that are my top five because I can't pick one of those. But you should definitely check out those books if you like historical romance or you like Scottish things um, because they were 
amazing. So let's talk about, speaking of Scottish, let's talk about the book that has to be my favorite, but of course was a reread and that was Written in My Own Heart's Blood. Finally finished this. I have finished the reread of the main big books. So it is time to get started on the Lord John series, which I'm giving myself a little breather. But then again, I say that after every Outlander book I finish and then I end up just being like, no, I want to read it. And I do it. And I have some um, an audible credit coming up in two days. And I think I might get the first, I think I might get the Scottish prisoner on audible. Don't hold me to it. I'm not promising, but I think that I might do that and just start listening to that one. This was amazing. There will be much more Outlander content coming. I'm really trying to plan it carefully because I want it to be good. But a few videos that are coming up is I am starting my Outlander character profiles and I'm starting with Roger as the first one just because all of these character profiles are extremely hard to do, but also know that I'm not going to be going into like nitty gritty i want to save that for the discussion part so what these character profiles are going to be is it's going to be like the bibliography of the character so like where they come from who they are why they're important to us and then like what their arc is in the books and then i'm going to like pose some questions that i want us to talk about because i don't just want these character profiles to be like obviously i can't go over everything roger has ever done but roger was just a little less intimidating like it's really hard to start with like jamie or claire or even lord john for one of these because there's so much content about them whereas like roger i feel like he's a slow build for us you know like the first two books that three two books that he's in there's not a ton but anyway i didn't want to side talk about that but anyway this was of course a five star i love the character growth we've seen in this one there was a few points of this book that i remembered very clearly but for the most part there was so much stuff i didn't remember about this series okay like there was so many things that i didn't remember but i love this book i love this series i love the characters, the situations, and I know that Diana's books take such a long time to come out, but they're worth the wait. They're worth the wait. And I mean, I've been into the series for five years now, and so I've had to wait. And there have been people who've been in this series for 30 years, and you've been waiting. Um, Go Tell the Bees That I'm Gone will be the first major book release that I will be a part of the fandom for. And I cannot wait. I cannot wait. You can bet I'm going to take a day or two off of work to get through that baby and bring it to you guys. It's also going to be really intimidating because it'll be me reading through a book for the first time. But we're months away from that. But I just get so excited when I even think about it for a second that I have to hype myself up. But anyway. This is hands down the favorite book that I read for the month. However, like it was a reread and I knew it was gonna be my favorite, but it was mind blowing and I love this book series so much. Then I finally read, there is two historical romances that I read this month that are considered like the holy grails of the historical romance genre. And I have one from 94 and one from 95, which is around the year that I was born. I was born in 93 and as someone who I started reading with Julia Quinn and Catherine Coulter, and I, I loved those books. I, Catherine Coulter specifically, she's my, first, she's my first historical romance author ever that I read. I read The Duke and I was my first book ever that I, no, no, why did I just say Julia Quinn? No, The, the Hellion Bride was the first historical romance book that I ever read. And then I read The Sherbrooke Bride and then I read The Heirs Bride. Those are the, that was the first one I read. Sorry, I love Julia Quinn. So I was like, but do can I? It wasn't the first, that one was. And now I look back and specifically the Catherine Coulter books, I don't think that I could reread those because the things stuck out in my head. But also I think that I could because when I look now, when I look back at some of these books, people say problematic, problematic, problematic. And the ones that I'm about to show you I don't see what that's that problematic about it. But here's the thing. I love dark romance. That is a hallmark of my channel. It is something that I champion, it is something that I shout out. And so these men, dark and twisty that they may be, but still have that like steel of gentlemen in them. That steel of 
manliness in them like they just light up all my trigger like they just light up all my lights all my pleasure sensors and they give me so much joy and so that's enough yakking about that i read lord of scoundrels by loretta chase and i also read dreaming of you by lisa claypez but we'll start with this one i got this on audible escape i have heard i'd heard so much about this book i'd listened to podcasts about this book so i knew what happened but i also forgot and so I forgot about the main, like, thing that makes Jess the best, the best heroine I think I've ever read, like, only rivaled maybe by Sarah, but I like Jess better because Sarah, it takes me a while to warm up to her and then she's amazing because she has a lot to learn. That's okay. She has to learn. Jess, she's already learned a lot of the things and she's smart and she can read people and her chemistry with Sebastian is bananas and just the way that they meet and the way that i love when a hero like hates how much he likes someone because with every other woman who i mean for dane and for derek like it's prostitutes that they're with or they're with rich ladies who want him for the danger and to meet someone who he would love is bone deep terror for these people because they don't want to be seen and I just love that I love that raw animalness of them where they've been living their life the way that they want to live their life and then this woman comes along and instead of just like swooning for them even though both of these women have the tingles for these men like they are like I'm attracted I want this to happen they don't let it compromise their brain and Dane, he is a villain for the first half of this book. He is an anti-hero slash straight up villain. The situation that he leaves Jess in is ruination. Like he leaves her to the wolves. Granted, it's a, it's a miscommunication that makes it, or a, a misconception that makes it happen. But there's also like, there's great communication in this book, specifically on Jess's side, because there's there's three specific instances in this book where in another romance novel, they would have been the crux of the matter. Like it would have been, this is our miscommunication. This is why our relationship isn't working. But with Jess, she refuses, refuses to let them be an issue. Like, oh, you think this about me? Let me walk up and ask you. Or, oh, I'm feeling this way about this thing. Or, oh, there's a situation where I could go behind your back because it would be better for me if I went behind your back. But no, I'm going to go up and ask you straight up. And it just, it's great because it, it, it takes the blame off of miscommunication and puts it onto the person. And it puts it onto him that he needs to man up because Jess isn't messing around. If this gets messed up, it's because he needs to man up. And I love it. I love it so much. This book is so good. And I specifically think that like if you like, if you like mafia type heroes, that's not what he is, but if you like that kind of alpha, where they're like, devil may care, I can ruin whoever I want to, women mean nothing to me. If you're the type of contemporary reader who that's the kind of man you like, you should read this. Don't look at these weird covers, because I know the covers throw people off. Don't think that. Jess and Dane are fucking fire. And Jess is balls to the wall, I'm smarter than you, you need to keep up. But he's also not dumb. He's just flabbergasted. She scrambles his brain. She sends the blood down to his dick. He can't think around her, but he's a smart guy. And so that where Jess is like, I'm not waiting for you. You need to catch up. I loved it. I loved it so much. I know why it's on all the top lists. I need to stop dragging my feet when people tell me about these historical romances. But I loved it and I savored it. The audio was amazing. The voice that the, the voice actor does for Dane just gave me the wibble wibbles in the stomach. Like it was so good. So please stop sleeping on Lord of Scoundrels. It's amazing. Also, stop sleeping on Dreaming of You. Okay? Okay. I won't rant as long about this one because I feel like this one's maybe more well known than Lord of Scoundrels. I don't know what people's like levels are. I made an entire reading vlog for this because I had all day yesterday and it was going to be the day. Like I was ready to savor it. I was ready to devote my attention to this book. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to film it. 
because I don't really do the reading vlogs anymore just because I'm only ever sitting around my house and it feels boring. That's why I'm doing the weekly wrap ups instead of vlogs. But I was like, well, let me film this because this is the book that is on the top of every historical romance list. The hero is considered like it's Derek Craven is king is is all over like the Faded Mates podcast and the um, learning the tropes podcast. And I was like, I'm ready for this, especially after reading Lord of Scoundrels, where I wasn't disappointed. I was ready for this. So I, you know, break down the entire story and everything in my reading vlog. It is a spoiler reading vlog. So I'll maybe tell some non-spoilers here if you are unconvinced. So this book is about Sarah Fielding, who is a writer. She's written one, she's written two books, but one of them is very popular. And it's written about a working woman named Matilda. And everyone who meets Sarah and finds out that she's the writer of this book, because she uses a pen name, they want to know what happened to Matilda. Like they believe Matilda is real and they speculate on the ending because there was kind of a, ha a cliffhanger in this book about what really happens to Matilda. And so Sarah always gets asked and Sarah always has to explain like Matilda isn't real. It's a fictional book, but it was written so well that no one believes that. So Matilda, or not Matilda, Sarah, she does research on kind of the seedier parts of London to write her fiction novels. And one night she comes across Derek Craven getting attacked, getting his face slashed uh, by his jealous ex-lover who hired some men to attack him. And he owns Craven's Club. And his rival is Ivo Jenner, which if you've, if you've read the newer stuff by Lisa Klepez, which I have, you'll know who Ivo Jenner is. That is Evie's father. And they have this rivalry and Sarah saves Derek's life. And so when she brings him back to his club and gets him a doctor, she asks to be able to see around behind the scenes of his club as kind of like a reward for saving him. And so she quickly makes everyone at his club fall in love with her and day or er, not Dane Derek just can't stand it because he's so attracted to her and he thinks he's so below her and he just wants her to go away because he wants her so badly and yeah it's just the two of them there's different situations there's a masquerade ball there is Sarah is almost engaged to this guy back in her hometown. She has really cool parents. She has these elderly parents who've really taught her to think for herself because they know that they will, they will die soon and she'll be on her own. So they've really taught her well. They've taught her to use her brain and to be smart. And I don't wanna spoil things for you if you've never heard about this, but if you do want the details, check out my reading blog for it. I'll tell you why Derek Craven is king, but he's so sexy, guys. <laughs> he's so sexy, and he's not a duke. He, he arose from the gutter, as they say. He had to name himself, and I just love it. I love it. So please don't sleep on those books. I've been putting them off because they're too hyped, because that's what I was doing. Read them read them i am imploring you it will be worth it they were amazing Ugh. so then i'll talk about i have a ya fantasy on this list which doesn't happen often anymore because i don't read them they're always on my tbrs and i never get to them like i have a stack behind me that i was supposed to read and i just i'm horrible guys that's why i'm trying to move more to romance as my tbr because i don't read these but this one I was highly anticipating, and that is The Shadow One by Laurie Forrest. This is the third book in what I believe, I think it's supposed to be four books, but I don't know that for sure. She hasn't said it's only four, maybe, I don't know. But this is the third book in The Black Witch Chronicles, being The Black Witch and The Iron Flower, the first two books. This series is bonkers. It's really hard to just like drop you in and tell you what's going on. But for the people who are into the show, see the show, who are into the series and ready for this book. It's so good. I think you'll be annoyed by, okay, let's just say like, if you are team Ivan, this book is going to annoy you. All right. You're going to be irritated and probably roll your eyes and probably get really mad at a certain point in the book. But if you are team Lucas and you think that Lucas had more to him than you've seen, you're going to love this book. And I'm team Lucas. I love Ivan. I think that Ivan taught 
Ellerin a lot. I think that he has a very important place in this story. I think he is swoony. I think he is a lot. But I always had a thing for Lucas and I thought that there was more to him than we were seeing. And I knew there was a reason that the author wasn't making him full evil. And I feel like this book brings it to fruition. So I hope that's not too spoilery for you. There is so much cool magic. Oh, this series has such cool magic. And it's very dark. Like it's almost new adult um, for what I would say. Like it has pretty graphic sex scenes. There's not a lot. It's not quite Sarah Day Mass level, but there's really bloody scenes. There is a lot of like you're seeing racism and assault and you're seeing really prejudiced people. And you're seeing some rough things in this series. Like it does not tiptoe lightly around stuff, but I love it. I love it. And this was a great addition. This was five stars. I'm so sad I have to wait another year for Demon Tide because there was a cliffhanger and holy bananas. I love it. And I think you should read the Black Witch Chronicles. It is a tough one to get into because our main character is not likable for almost the entire first book. Some would argue she's not likable in the first book. And the society is being set up that you're in. And you are seeing racism and abuse of people. And you're seeing your heroine who was very naive and raised very sheltered, not knowing what side is good. So she's on the side of the society in the beginning for a long time because the people she meets of the other races live up to what she's heard. They live up to what she's heard. And the way she's treated by them, she agrees with her people for a very long time. And so a lot of people hated on the Black Witch. There was lots of controversy about it when it started. And so the author was asking you to buy into that and go on the journey with Ellerin as finally there is people who are kind to her from these other races and she starts to meet them and understand that these prejudices are wrong. And I feel like the author does it in a real way, using magic and creatures to show the parallels of, sometimes we hear prejudices and then we meet the wrong people from those places that live up to it. That happens sometimes. It's ugly and it's wrong, but sometimes it happens. Or we see, you know, we hear things about certain people and then we see it confirmed. And that's hard. Like, I understand why the first book was hard for people. But then as the series goes on, we see Ellerin grow and we see her interact and realize that it doesn't matter if you have these prejudices or not. You still need to treat people like people. And I found it amazing and I saw what the author was doing. And so I stand this series. I love it because I think especially in the cancel culture we live in, in the dangerous things that we see, if you will stick through this series, like trust this author. This isn't accidental that she has Ellerin be so unlikable and that you hate her and think she's racist and she thinks she's bad. Because if you don't believe people can change, then why human? Like why human? Why human if no one can ever change? And I love it because when Ellerin starts to make the turn, you can root for her because she knows what's going on and she knows what she's giving up. She's practically royalty in the life that she's living. And if she chooses to help the rebellion, if she chooses to help these, these races of people she's meeting, she's gonna lose everything. And in this society, if you're not a woman who does what you're told, no matter your race, you're over. And any power she might have by being a part of this prestigious family will be gone if she goes against them. So it's fair that this is a heavy choice for her to make. And just because we as the reader know that that world is wrong, just because we know that the people in charge are predators, pigs and assholes and rapists and assault, just because we know that, Ellerin doesn't. She doesn't know that. She only knows what she's been told. 
And when she first enters society, that's what she sees is those prejudices confirmed. Okay. And it takes time and it takes her being treated badly by the people for it to change. So I just went on a rant about that. I'm sorry. But also that book got so much crap when it was first coming out that like I felt like people were missing out on a lot because this author has to go to those places and make it dark so that when Ellerin is making a turn, when she decides on the true path, it's so satisfying. And also she's whiny. People don't like that. She's whiny. She's still whiny in the second book a little bit too, but she was sheltered and it's so satisfying to me. Anyway, and then the last one I won't talk too much about because I ranted a lot about this one is Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. This is a historical romance, uh, but it's more erotica. Mm, it's erotic. I don't know if it's erotica, but this is a pirate and her pirate husband they're having problems in their marriage. They're getting tracked by a pirate hunter who they have history with that the female pirate, Bennett Sharp, doesn't know about. And it gets pretty sexy. There is BDSM, there is menage, there is uh, assault, there's trigger warnings for assault and rape and blood and gush and bleh. And it's amazing. It's freaking amazing and you should read it and I loved it so I've talked too long for this wrap up but these are the books that were my favorite this month make sure you check out my weekly wrap ups if you want to know more about the other 50 books that I read and yeah I put up new videos three to four times a week and you can watch some more of them right now bye